So in order to get started with Cloud Functions, uh, we need to either be on the pay as you go plan or we need to be on the free plan and then use emulators. Uh, so because I want to give you the possibility to stay on the free plan as long as possible, I'm going to show this with emulators. So in order to get started with that, uh, we need to initialize this as a Firebase repository. So if you recall, we have our front end project, which is an Angular application. And the directory right before it is the Git directory. And this is also the directory that I want to make the uh, Firebase repository. So you can use the command Firebase init. And this Firebase init command is going to take you through an installation wizard to set up all of the emulators. So there's an emulator for all of the Firebase features, which means that you can have a five store running locally. You can have your functions running locally. You can have even hosting running locally. Uh, so you don't need the cloud in order to do development. But of course, when you want to deliver your software, you want to deliver it to the cloud. And just for demonstration's sake, I'm going to just set up everything with emulators. So we could just only do functions now, uh, but instead I'm going to pick everything and just press A here and just press enter. And I'm going to pick an existing project. Uh, so we need to uh, associate this with the Firebase project and we have one on the Firebase console, right? So we can use an existing project and I call this one uh, if stack 23. So it's always going to give you suggestions as to how you want to set it up. So there are rules for the real-time database. And here, if you just press enter, it's just going to give you a file called database rules.json. Uh, of course, you might have another file, uh, but I'm just going to go with a default setup here. And the same with the Firestorm rules. And you can also have indexes locally. And now it asks us if you want to make JavaScript or TypeScript cloud functions. I think we should start off by just making simple JavaScript functions. So we can always migrate to TypeScript if we want to, uh, but I think we should start off with just JavaScript. And you might want to use ESLint, uh, so the lint just helps you, uh, but it doesn't change your program's behavior. And this essentially just writes an NPM install. And when we get around to delivering our Angular application, uh, we need to show where our Angular dist folder is. When we build the Angular application, it's going to make an output folder called dist. And inside of that, there is the name of the Angular project, which we call front end. So the path that we're going to specify for our Angular directory, which is the build directory is front end slash dist slash front end. If you have another path, uh, you should look at your angular.json file to figure out at what path your Angular build system outputs the dist folder. And sometimes it's not called dist. For some people, it's called www. Uh, but I think for most people, Angular will default to calling it dist. And uh, since Angular is a single page application framework, we're going to say yes to this. So I just write Y. And I'm going to say no to this one. And I'm going to say yes to this one and just uh, you don't need all of them you can just pick whichever one you want here by just pressing space uh, if you press a you get all of them and uh, here it's going to ask you for which ports you want to set up so you can just go with all of the default ones here you can always change this later on And I think uh, the user interface they make is uh, really helpful. So you should definitely pick yes on this one. And say yes to downloading them. So uh, if you don't have Java installed, you might get a problem here. So you should have a working installation of Java and uh, then you can run the emulators. So the Firebase uh, initialization is complete now. And uh, since I have our source code open here, it's, um, we can just look at what we now have. So all of the red ones are our new files. Firebase.json is the most important one. Remember when we said yes to getting all of the emulators and it asked us what ports we want? We can always change it here. 
So uh, if you don't want to have port 5000 for hosting or, and 5001 for functions, you can just change it. And the Firebase RC is just a file that lets us know what Firebase project this is associated with. So you may also have one that is called fstack23, but since we don't have the same Google account, yours can carry the same name. So you can just call it whatever that you called your project on the Firebase console. The command for starting the emulators is Firebase emulators start with a little colon here. So if you enabled the Firebase uh, emulator UI, you get to go to a localhost port 4000 or whatever port you allocated to this, and then you can see all your emulators here. So I can see that all of mine are running right now. So right now I just want to show you what it looks like if you use an emulator for Firestore instead of the Cloud Firestore. So I'm just going to run an ng serve here, and then I'm going to go into my front end directory and find the fire service here. Here I'm just gonna write this Firestore use emulator. And now it's gonna ask me for a host and a port number here. So I'm just gonna write local host and uh, the port number for the Firestore emulator. Uh, we can find it inside of the UI here. So we have it up here, 8080. If we just write 8080, like this, and now we can uh, go to our program. So the Angular program is running on localhost port 4200 here. So I just logged in uh, with some random user here, and uh, let's start sending a message. So this message here, uh, just like last time, we persisted using the exact same functions. Um, but if we're going to the Firestore emulator now, you can see that now we have data inside of the Firestore emulator. And this data does not go into our cloud Firestore, which means that you can separate your development environment and your production environment very easily with emulators. So I'm gonna delete this one again for now because uh, I just wanna stay uh, on the cloud with Firestore and just run functions locally. Um, but this is just to display that you can use emulators for all of these that we have been using the cloud version of so far. So when you go into your functions directory here, it's going to give you this hello world cloud function by default. So right out the bat, we can actually call this cloud function here. So the cloud function here just says hello from Firebase. And I can go to the functions emulator here and see the log. So it says here HTTP function is initialized. And then we have some address here. So this is an HTTP endpoint that we can just call. And now once we go to this address here, we can see it says hello from Firebase at localhost port 5001. And uh, that is because this here is an HTTP callable function. So we send an HTTP request and then we get a response back that says hello from Firebase. So this is just like if you send HTTP requests to any other REST API in the world. And of course, you can also use any other HTTP client. Let's say that you want to use curl, just enter curl and the address here, and you get the exact same response. You could also use Postman or whatever. The idea is that we now start building these cloud functions. They are server-side code that we can use for our applications. Now, if we have some business logic, instead of processing it inside of the browser, which is client side, we don't have to trust the client anymore. We can do things server side and server side always renders new possibilities for us. So basically anything that is a security concern should always be put server side. So in the upcoming video, we're going to take a look at how we can set up cloud functions using Express.js. So just like if you use the web API or you use Java Spring, or you use uh, Fiber with Go, or whatever you want to use, you can also use Express with Node.js. So even though we're writing JavaScript, this is no longer front-end stuff. This is back-end stuff that is just callable via our front-end, which means that our front-end from now on should start sending HTTP requests using something like Axios to our cloud functions. We can still use all of the other Firebase 
uh, tools like Firestore and authentication and cloud storage. But a lot of custom logic should always be put server-side. And uh, that's why we're putting so much effort into writing these functions from here on.